Hi everyone, and welcome back to this comprehensive video series covering all things 3D modeling in Clip Studio Paint. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, please check them out so you can catch up with us. And with that being said, let's continue. Now we have our finished build and it took us just a little over an hour to complete. And while I am fast because I've done this a few times before, you're going to get quicker and quicker the more you practice. So don't get too disheartened if it takes you a little longer to make a room. And despite it taking an hour, now we have this fully built scene to use over and over again anytime we wish. I'm going to show you how to save this to your materials library just a little later, but first I want to talk about already existing interiors. It's very easy. We'll hide this for a little bit and I'm going to load up an interior or a background rather. We'll do an office. This might take a little while to load simply because they're generally bigger than props, <laughs> as you may have uh, already guessed. And sometimes you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. Now, if you remember, I said sometimes you'll get black looking things like this and all we have to do is go to blackface culling to get rid of it. So you might get a bit of lagging using models this big, as you can see. So I recommend you using a good computer with a good processor. I'm actually doing this on my Surface Pro, so it's not the most powerful machine in the world. I have a Lenovo laptop, which is older than my Surface, except it has better processing power. Its battery is shot to hell, so it's kind of masquerading as a desktop now, but we'll try and make it work. But as you can see, this is a pretty detailed model that has a lot of things going on right now. So what we want to do is we're going to get a better look. We'll click the roof twice to get it to go red, and then we'll know exactly where it is. Thankfully, this model is actually in English, so it's easy to manipulate. We'll get rid of this wall too. Okay, there we go. We got a much better view. What I just want to talk to you about is how if you already have a pre-made interior model that someone else has made and you have paid for or downloaded for free, it can still be edited and changed to your liking. So we can open up our 3D models and we can choose props or even people. So let's go to people first and we'll drop in a male this time. So he's a giant right now because I shrunk this model down because if I have it too big, it just lags legs. But let's try again because I do want to keep him to scale because he is it's about five foot seven, five foot eight right now. So he's in a tiny miniature replica model of this office. And we're going to change his height. So we'll do 185 centimeters. Put him on the ground. So there we go. And you can drag as many things as you want onto an already built model. You'll probably just have to scale and adjust them as you see fit. What you have to make sure is, however, is that the layer itself, the 3D layer, remember the one with the pyramid and the little vector cube? You have to make sure that you are on this layer. If I drag a model onto this layer one, let's go buff man, shall we? As you can see, another 3D layer has been created. And this is not good because that means when we move the camera around this dude, the other 3D layer is not going to move accordingly. And you'll see how freaky that is. See? So it's not on the same plane. Think of it as like a parallel world. These two guys and the office are on completely different planes. So let's delete him and select the 3D layer and we'll try again. And as you can see, no extra layer was created. Put some light on him. And if we turn the camera, the whole thing is going to move. So that is another way of creating backgrounds for your drawing or your comic is to find already made spaces like this one. So instead of having to 
place every single desk and chair in here and cabinet and lights and doors, plants, etc. Even though they are pre-made, you can add your own things. You can even delete things. So you say, I don't want this chair. All you have to do is click it until it goes red. Click here and it's selected and we just hide it. And there we go. And you can do that with anything on the canvas. So that is just covering adding to an existing scene. So someone else has made the scene, uploaded it to the asset store. If it's for free, you grabbed it for free. If it's paid, you splashed some dough and downloaded it. And then you can just add whatever you want to it. Hi guys, sorry for the interruption, but if you're enjoying this video and it's helping you, please give it a like and a share so others can find it. What helped you might help someone else. If you could also subscribe, that'd be great too. There'll be plenty of videos in this series, so click that big black button below so you don't miss a single one. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. So let's get rid of this because it's super laggy. We won't say it, we'll get rid of just the layer go back into a new canvas with our own made set. As I said earlier, I'm now going to show you how to save a scene. This also works with the previous example, the pre-existing model. So if you had a pre-existing model and you added a bunch of your own props and you made it all special and unique, you can also save that to your material library. It's not just for these made from scratch ones. There are two ways to do this. First is to, again, make sure that you are on the 3D layer. Go to Edit and go to Register Material, Image, and this menu will pop up. You may recognize this menu that pops up when you're editing material in this window, you know, double clicking on the material. So right now we want to change it to, let's say, Bedroom Example Model. You have to choose a location, it won't save if you don't, so I'm just going to do downloads, let's go material. Here you can put a bunch of tags to help in searching, however you can do this later on if you so choose, you don't actually have to do this now. All of this stuff is editable later. Click OK. And if we go to downloads and material where we saved it, there you are, you'll see it there. I'm going to name this number one because I'm going to show you the other way that you can save it. This is much easier and I would just recommend it because shortcuts for the win. All you have to do is make sure you're on this layer. Click and drag the layer into whatever folder you so choose. And it shows up. We double click and we can name it bedroom. Whoa. Example model two. And I'm going to show you something. So let's just go into 3D here. First, if you click this button, you will see the details. So I can have it like that and it will just be the names, but I'd like to see the details. You'll notice that it says type and that simply means what type of material it is. So this is a 3D folder. These are ones that I've just recently downloaded. All of these say 3D object and that's good. That's what we want. However, when you save a 3D object of your own making, as a material, you'll notice that the type says layer. This is very important to note because layer types will act differently than simple 3D objects. And this is a, I believe, a pirating countermeasure. It's basically to stop people uh, uploading and sharing uh, models that aren't theirs. So if I uploaded this right now, I would probably be banned from the asset store because all of these models in here aren't mine. I've just used them to build a scene. The scene is mine, but not the models within it. So with the type being layer, this creates a unique kind of problem, but I'm going to show you how to overcome this problem. So let's get rid of this entire layer. And first we're going to put in this teddy bear. Aww. And it's a 3D object. So it'll appear and we're going to zoom out a bit. We're going to go back and we're going to drag our bedroom model also onto the canvas. There we are. And as you can see straight away, there's the problem. We have two 3D layers and the camera problem that I displayed earlier is occurring. The way to overcome this 
is by putting the layer type first. So let's get rid of both of these. And if we drag our model on first and then go back to the Teddy and drag it on, we don't run into that problem. So now we have the same plane and we can chuck this Teddy, let's put it on the bed, shall we? I'll turn him around and we're gonna chuck him kind of in the corner of the bed. This is a girl's room, I would assume, after all. We've got the heels on the dresser and the jewellery box on the shelf up here. So that is how you overcome that little problem. If you make a scene from scratch or you edited a existing model and then saved it by dragging into a folder and you get type layer, you must put the type layer material onto the canvas before any other 3D object. And that's it for this video, so please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as best I can. Don't forget to like and share, and thank you for watching. Bye!